Hey, welcome to Q School session three. Great to have you with us today. How many of you have found this to be helpful so far? Anybody raise your hand. All right, a few of you. I see you brought some friends today. That's pretty cool. How many of you, this is your first session in person? Love it, love it. Excellent, great, to, great. Listen, if you can do me a favor, if you found any value so far, either online or in person, send Dr. Mack a little message because he took a big risk by trusting me with this idea. So a few uh, months ago when students were coming to my office, after one Friday, I think I told a quick story, one Friday I had 13 different And the, the entrepreneurs coming up were asking, I'm saying the same thing in every session. And I'm not going to be able to help these young people for six more weeks, eight more weeks. And I thought, what if we created a four course called Q School and the four basic need to be taught? So that's why we're here today. We're on session three. We're going to take Thanksgiving off. You can be here on Black Friday, but you'll be by yourself. But there will be many businesses that are running ads that day for sure. But then on December 1st, it's our final session. And on that session, I'm going to show you how to become a published Amazon author. So all of you can walk away on December 1st knowing how to publish a book and Anyone else published on Amazon in the room? Not yet, so we're gonna have a lot of people. Okay, we already have people watching online too, thanks so much. We have people jumping in. Scott Hadley said the audio is cutting in and out, so can you check that, Will? Scott Hadley said the uh, audio is cutting in and out. Can you make sure that that's not the case? Audio volume is really low. So I don't know if we can do anything there. Um, let's check that out. Awesome. We're fixing that. Scott, let us know in about 30 seconds. All right. So if you have a handout, great. Open it up. We're going to be talking today about LLCs. We're going to be talking about making your offer. Cooper, remember Cooper? Last week we, or I guess, yeah, last week we talked about him. He had sold eight gloves on, is this Cooper? I speak of the man and he walks in the doors. So last week you had followed the steps. You launched your email on Friday. You sold eight pair on Friday. And then over the next few days, you told me how many more did you sell? 20, 20 more pair, that is awesome. Isn't that cool? Let's give him a hand, yeah, yeah. And so we are going to be interviewing him in a, in a moment, and we're going to learn the funnel. It's called a funnel, a sales funnel. We're going to learn a sales funnel. So Scott Hadley, if you can go and type in, if you can hear us, and it might be on your machine. We're, we're hearing that people in the room can hear it on their machine. So Scott, maybe um, take a peek at that. But let us know, crowd, anyone who's watching, we see a, about 13 of you on one channel. Um, so I don't know what to say. Um, Maria, why don't you go test it out in the lobby, okay, on YouTube? Because Scott says it's still low, and he says the speakers are up full. So I don't know. So Maria, go test it. Thank you, and we'll see what we can do. All right, folks, let's jump right in, and we are going to be sharing the curriculum with you. So um, if you don't have it, we have a few paper copies in the room. If you walked in and you need a paper copy, raise your hand. Uh, we have just a few left. So uh, uh, Emma, let's get the gentleman in the back a copy. And, and then you have one left. You have one left. You're, you just peek on. Awesome. So you guys just share, sit with somebody. Awesome. Okay. And I, that is totally me. I own not making enough copies, so my apologies. 
All right, hopefully you can see Q School. Let's jump right into it, folks. And we are in session three. Again, if you missed any, you can definitely watch previous replays. In session one, we talked about your value proposition statement and your customer avatar. Then last time we talked about writing your manifesto, we talked about how Nike built their entire movie Air, produced by Ben Affleck and Matt Damon on the manifesto. And then we looked at also optimizing socials. I saw that some of you optimized your LinkedIn. Did anybody optimize any socials last week since we met? Do you remember if you have a Cedarville address how to do that? On LinkedIn, is it working, Maria? It's working good, the audio? Perfect, all right. So we, sh we shared with you that if you are on LinkedIn and if you have a Cedarville address, you can basically get verified. And getting verified is awesome because I will show you really quick on LinkedIn what that looks like. There we are, we're live on LinkedIn. We got a crowd over there. By the way, that's important, folks. StreamYard, which is what, what we are using right now. StreamYard, if, if you're unsure how to um, broadcast things, I recommend StreamYard. It allows you to do one live stream and broadcast to, we're on YouTube right now, we're on Twitter right now, we're on LinkedIn right now, and we're on Facebook. And there's different reasons why you wanna be on each different platform. I'm teaching a digital marketing content creation in the spring, and I'm gonna teach you that each platform has its own unique culture, vocabulary, and clientele. And so some of you might be having really good products and services, but you might be on the wrong platform. You'll see here though, LinkedIn has this verified ability. So if you're like, am I verified? I don't know, go to LinkedIn and right next to your name, if you have a shield, then it says that you're verified. I recommend verification. We live in a culture right now of fake news, fake culture, fake identities. And so a lot of people are skeptical. And so um, another quick thing, I don't know if you know this, this is little tricks here, I don't know, this is unplanned. But if you go to URL, if your URL is missing the S up in the URL bar, if your website is HTTP but without the S, you're gonna lose some traffic because S is a certificate that basically says that there's an extra level of security. And so sometimes when you go to certain browsers, if you don't have an HTTPS in your website, you haven't enabled a certificate, you won't get as much traffic. There will be browsers who say suspicious website, we don't want uh, you to go on that website. So just be aware of those things. All right, let's jump right in. And let's talk about uh, the session today. I want to quickly say uh, any feedback, any questions as you've been trying on your value proposition statement. As you guys and ladies have been watching commercials maybe, as you have the Ohio State Michigan football game coming, as you've been seeing commercials, advertisements, have you been picking up VPSs from other businesses? Have you been seeing this? Anyone? Anyone have any thoughts? Commercials, businesses, anybody? As you've had VPS now in your mind, what do you think? Anybody, any feedback from the crowd? Don't worry, I won't call on you. By the way, um, let's post, Maria, you're posting that, the, the uh, Scott and others need the handouts, excellent. So we're gonna post that right there in the chat. So folks, I always, everywhere I go, I listen for the value proposition statement. Has anyone ever said to you, hey, can I meet with you and pick your brain? Has anyone had this happen to them? Anyone? If you haven't, you'll get this. Kim, have you had this happen? Yeah. Yes. Folks, never, if you've ever done this, don't worry. We're all learning. And whenever I do a, something wrong, I say, up until now, I give myself a little out. I say, up until now, I've been doing it wrong. But never email an influencer and say, can I pick your brain? 
Why? Why would I say that? Elizabeth, why would I say that that's bad? That's a bad lead. Anybody? Yes. Okay, so is it too broad? Is that is that fair? Can I pick your brain as too broad? Yes. It it's asking for their time. So I have something that I have an automatic responder when somebody asks that question. So I really encourage you to have an automatic responder. Folks, if people ask you the same thing three times in a row, you should create an automation for that. And you probably have a business, right? So if someone's saying to Aubrey, Aubrey, you know, can I pick your brain about this topic? Or can, I, can you help me with this? If three people ask you to do something, there's a business model there. And I wasn't smart enough to see this in the beginning. People would say, oh, how do you turn books into 18 streams of income? You know, I see that you've done that with your books. And I said, ah, it's a long story. You know, ah, uh, you're not, you're, it's complicated. Little did I know that taking a problem and breaking it into a framework. Let me say that again. Most nonfiction books are based on a framework. Those of you who are in my digital marketing class, what is the story brand framework called? Yes, SB7. So Donald Miller wrote a New York Times bestselling book called Story Brand based upon the SB7 framework. Do you know, check this out folks, this is very uh, interesting, check this out. The entire Q School, you might not know this, is based on a framework. Do you know what it is? I've created this framework, I call it, it's a one sheet. It's who, what, when, where, why, and how. That is literally how I break down almost everything that I create. So when I went to Dr. Mack and said, hey, Dr. Mack, there's this thing called Q School. I think I'd like to do it. I didn't, I didn't say, but I'm not sure what it's about. I said, here's the framework. Here's who it's for. Here's what it's about. Here's when it would be. Here's where it's at. Here's why and here's how. Finish the statement if you're one of my students. Clarity attracts, confusion repels. So if you have a clear framework, you will attract people. If you have an, a fuzzy framework, you will repel people. So we have some people in the room. They're starting an ice cream business. Is this true? Possibly? Yeah. So what you should basically do is you should say, hey, for that ice cream business, who's our customer? What are we going to serve? Where are we going to serve it? When? By the way, the kiss of death is to put for the when, TBD or TBA. You never want to create anything that says TBD or TBA with the time. Why? I, I hint, I just kind of gave the hint away with my little clarity thing. Why do, we do, why do we not want TBD or TBA? Yes. It's confusion. People say, you haven't committed. Why should I commit? You haven't told me the time. Why are you asking me to sign up for your product or program? So even in the past, if I created businesses, I would create a fictitious launch date just to put something on the calendar. And if I didn't have enough sales by then, I would bump it. So I, I would launch things all the time, courses, and I'd never put TBA, I'd never put TBD. And folks, if I even had one person buy, I felt like I was in. So I, my, my belief would go through the roof if I would even have one person sign up. And then I would say, now I just need to fill it. But you cross the threshold when you move into somebody signing up. All right, so frameworks are very important, all right? Frameworks, very, very, very important. All right, let's jump in now. So, VPS, value proposition statement and customer avatar. Anyone have any other commentary before we keep going? We're good? All right, again, that was just a review. Session two, write your manifesto and optimize your LinkedIn and socials. 
Has anyone given their socials any type of tweak in the last week? Yes, Cooper, what did you tweak? Okay. All right, so I'm, I'm repeating so the people on uh, live stream can hear all these amazing people. Welcome, people. Okay, we're hearing that the audio is still low. If it's still low, go to YouTube. Thank you. So go to YouTube Cedarville. You can grab it there. Awesome. Workshop lessons are posted there. Excellent. So what did you adjust, Cooper? You Yep. So your link, your LinkedIn is verified. Did you also tweak anything else on LinkedIn? Instead of saying Cedarville grad student, does it say founder of Globs or something? Yeah. So switch that tagline. So again, folks, if you're if you're brand new today and you missed last week, on your LinkedIn, right underneath your name, it has a tagline. And that tagline goes with you where? Just as a quick review, where does it go? When you comment on anybody's wall, on anybody's post, it brings in your value proposition statement. And so that is amazing free marketing that you can do if you provide valuable comments. Excellent. Has anyone given an influencer or someone a recommendation this week? Or is that going to happen for any of you? Remember that? Why, why on LinkedIn? Again, I'm just giving a quick repeat. We always go forward and we rarely re refresh, but this is good because some of you are like, oh yeah, I forgot about that. I need to do that. So why, do you, why, do, why should you post a recommendation for somebody? Yes. They have to acknowledge it. So I'm going to show you right now quickly on LinkedIn when you're on LinkedIn, see, look at, I got network people, I got messages, I got notifications. We're live on LinkedIn right now on a session. Uh, but yes, below, by the way, in two weeks, all of you are going to be able to put on LinkedIn your publications. So we're going to teach you how to do uh, an Amazon and underneath publications, you're going to be able to, oh, look at that. You can go right to your book, right from LinkedIn. Is that cool or what? So again, on LinkedIn, Kim, you know, your higher education, uh, you're going to be able to put show publications. And I can click see more, and, and there's all my different publications. And it's great advertisement, okay? So you can basically feature any books, any papers. But then you can go straight to Amazon, and folks, this is all building. You might say, ah, oh, that takes work. Why would I do that? Because you're building an algorithm around you, all right? And if you go recommendations, you'll see here that when you recommend somebody, it forces the recommendation into their inbox. So I hear people a lot of times say, how do I get influencers to notice me? How do I get somebody in the running industry to see that I have gloves. Well, you go and you follow people who are at Nike. You can do that on LinkedIn. Who works at Nike? You friend them. You connect with them. And then you see, have they written a blog post? Do they have any podcast out? You consume it. And then you write a recommendation about it. This is one trick we, you, we teach our authors all the time. How do I get endorsements for my book? You write, how do I get on a show? Carrie, there's a podcast of 5,000 listeners. How do I get on the podcast? Here's the lame way. Here's what everyone does. They email the podcast person and say, can I be on your show? If you have a podcast, by the way, folks, you'll get that pitch all the time. So instead of what you do, is you go on Apple, you write, by the way, this is gold, Let, write this down, Let, take notes here. How do I get on someone's big show on YouTube, on, pot, on, on Apple? How do I do this? I'm not saying you'll get Joe Rogan's attention, but you'll get a lot of people's attention. You go on the podcast on Apple, and you write a legitimate review. 
and you don't just say, this is a great podcast, you should listen to it. You say, loved episode 39, took the advice of Joe when he advised me to do X, Y, Z. I applied it and got this result. Amazing, I highly recommend it. Then you email Joe and you might say, how do I find Joe's email? Many ways, you DM them, you follow them on Instagram, you message them, you find them on Twitter. Folks, you do this however you need to do this. And then what you do is you say, subject line, not can I be on your show, that's like can I pick your brain. That's not showing up filled up. Some of you are in my digital marketing class. You are, that's taking. Everyone in the world is taking. So if you wanna be an outlier, you don't take, you give. So now you message Joe and you say, subject line, loved episode 39, five star review, image inside. That is like gold. That subject line is gold. Now, Joe's really curious. He's like, ooh, what's going on? He opens the review. He reads it and says, wow, this person, listen to my episode. They wrote a review and they emailed me. And by the way, here's what the email says. Joe, loved episode 39. See my review below. In fact, I've been telling my tribe about your podcast and how they need to listen to it. You might say, Carrie, I don't have a tribe. Do you have a dog? Do you have a plant? Do you have a sister? Great, that's your tribe. So you go to your dog and you say, dog, you should listen to Joe's episode, it's 39, awesome. Now you have integrity, you didn't lie. You go to your plant, you say, plant, you should listen to episode 39. Great, and now you tell your sister. So now you tell Joe in the email, Joe, loved episode 39, wrote a five-star review, told my tribe about it, by the way, I wrote a book on the same topic. If you ever have someone cancel, this is not presumptuous, if you ever have someone cancel, last minute, please consider me, I'd love to add value to your audience. Best wishes, David or Nate. Now, why is that amazing? Why does Joe care? Because you just said you're directing people to his website. You just proven yourself and you wrote a five-star review and you weren't presumptuous. You didn't say, can I be on your show? You said, hey, if anyone cancels last minute. You see how, you see how that works, folks? That puts you in like the top 0.01%. So, now I, now I remember how I got off topic. It was all about brain picking. Let's go back to that. I'll close the loop and then we'll, we'll continue, okay? So I have a little email that I have all queued up that says if somebody asks if they can pick my brain, I say, thank you for your amazing request. Please watch this video. And the video will tell you how to complete an impact filter because I've found out that if you complete an impact filter, we'll have a much more enriching conversation. Then the video goes on and the video says, hey, thanks for asking if you can pick my brain. I'm honored. So again, I'm not ego, I'm not a jerk. And I say, my coach makes me fill out impact filters before I meet with him. And guess what? It's so helpful. It helps me link our meeting with purpose. And sometimes it shows my coach that someone else in his network can help me better. So look below and please complete the impact filter. And then my assistant and I will chat and see if we're the best fit. Now, how many people do you think actually complete the impact filter out of 100? What do you think? Less than 10, absolutely. Less than 10% actually care to take a few minutes to frame the meeting. Folks, if you ever ask for a meeting with somebody really big and you don't honor their time, you're basically insulting them, okay? 
So if you really want to impress someone, you honor their time. And so yes, most people don't even complete it, so you've already said no to 90% of the requests. But the people who do fill it out, like today, someone filled one out. Someone filled one out for me today. And guess what? They filled it out, and it was so clear, but it was not something I could do. They wanted to meet with me to pitch me to see if I would invest in their product. And I knew it wasn't a good fit, and it was for real estate, and that's not even my sweet spot. And so I responded back with a personal Loom video. It took me 60 seconds. Thanks so much for filling out this request. I see that you want to meet for a collaboration. And I see that it's all about investing. And you know what? That's not, uh, by the way, here's what I say. That's not my opus. Now hang on. Are you all like, what the heck's an opus? Right? If you ever want to see my opus, go to carryoverrunner.com slash opus. I'm going to show you what it looks like. Carryoverbrunner.com slash opus. Now again, you might be like, dude, what the heck are you teaching us? I'll tell you what I'm teaching you. I've gotten speaking gigs and deals because people have come and seen my opus. And you might say, like, what in the heck are you talking about? My opus, see, read this quote here. Is that powerful? That's not me. Look at that quote and tell me if that's not an amazing quote. You like that quote? Is that a good quote or what? You like it? So people read that quote and then the whole rest of the document is my opus. Opus is from my coach, Chet Scott. It stands for overarching vision purpose, unifying strategies, and scorecard for significance. This is me and the Holy Spirit spending time saying, what do I want said about me when I die? What's the biggest thing I can do in life? And here it is. And so I tell, I tell people, hey, I'd love to serve you. Thanks so much for filling out the form. I can't help you. It's not part of my opus, but I'll tell you what. It is for Jimmy. I love to introduce you to Jimmy. I'll do it with a personal video. So folks, again, this is a lot of, you might say it's a lot of work, but this is how you get to the point where you have right fit people. How much is your hourly rate? Write down your hourly rate for a moment. Don't show anyone. I'm not going to ask for you to share it out loud, but write down your hourly rate. You all got a number? If somebody said, Ezra, can I pay you for consulting. You're amazing. Can I have an hour of your time? Write down not what you, write down your big dream. What is your big dream to be paid for an hour of highly, highly valuable consulting? Write that down. Write that down. You got it? You got a number? I'm not going to ask you to share, but you got a number? Okay. So, now if somebody who wasn't a right fit asked to pick your brain, you drive over to Starbucks, let's say they even buy you coffee. They, they spend six bucks on you. You're like, that's pretty cool. You drove over there, you spend an hour, and the person doesn't even know what they're asking. They don't even know what they're saying. You've wasted your time, now you drive back. So you've spent 90 minutes, you've gone 30 minutes or 15 minutes there, you met for an hour, 15 minutes back, and now you had 90 minutes invested in that person and they didn't even know what they want. Now look at your hourly rate. Was that a good investment of your time? What do you think? Now t times that times 10. And if you get really popular, times that by 100. Now do you see why you need to create prompts like this in your life to protect your time? By the way, is this biblical? Did Jesus have constraints on his time? Because there's some people who are like, come on now, this sounds really against the Bible. I mean, aren't you just supposed to meet with anybody anytime for anything? What do you think, Nate? Good example of Jesus. I mean, you're in ministry. Yeah? 
Jesus is healing a bunch of people. I'm just repeating for the people. Yep. And then in the morning, they get up by by Jesus, and the guy from the tomb wakes up in the morning and heals him. And then they tell you. Yeah. And he's like, no, I have to get up and do these things. So wow. So Jesus actually said no many different times. Interesting. What do you feel about somebody who's really, not a jerk, but somebody who's really clear with their mission and their time and their value proposition statement? Does that person raise in value in your mind or decrease? Raise, right? This is my point. If you don't start treating your time like it's important, no one else will. No one else will. And if you're an entrepreneur or if you're in business, you need to protect your time. It's one of the most important things. That's why I'm spending a lot of time talking about this. Because you got to figure this out early in your journey, okay? All right, I want you to turn to the person next to, next to you. And uh, I'm going to talk to the people here for a moment. But turn to the person next to you and say, here's the number one thing I've learned already. All right, go ahead and do that. Ezra, do you mind grabbing that door, by the way? I'm going to shut this door. What's the number one thing you've learned already? How are we doing? How, how's the audio? You think it's good? So it's up now? Good job. You, YouTube's working? All right, everyone. Let's hear some quick, let's hear some quick things. And by the way, Will, I know you're doing amazing. Some people are still saying it's low. I don't know. So I, I can either take it off and just talk right in the machine. I don't know. Yeah, get it up all the way. Awesome. What, what's anyone learning? Go ahead. What, what do you got? Let's hear some quick things. What's, what's the ice cream people over here? What, what's one thing you've learned? Framework and the clarity? Okay. Awesome. Yes, Ezra. Don't waste your time. Don't waste your time. Yeah. Yes. Know your value. Know your value. Yes. Be direct. Be direct. Yes. Yes. Sometimes it's good. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. I love it. These are good. Yeah. Anyone else? Anybody online? Go ahead. Share that. Yep. All right. So let's keep rolling here. We got a lot to talk about. All right. So now we're going to talk about the seven elements of a compelling offer. Folks, I'm going to go pretty deep, pretty fast into a really cool PowerPoint. So hang with me and let's watch this. Okay. So, Maria, give me a thumbs up if you can see that um, on YouTube. You can see, like, the whole big screen. Amazing. Yeah? Okay, sweet. All right, so here we go. Um, seven elements of a compelling offer. I'm going fast, all right? So you can jot down what you want. If you have a handout, by the way, if you have a handout on a laptop, make sure that you save it to your desktop. Because if you complete it in the browser and write all these magical notes and shut your browser, you will lose it. So we've had people do that in the past, okay? So what's a compelling offer? It's more than a product or service. It's the big, unique promise you are making. So I heard someone in the room has an Airbnb. Awesome. What's the promise if people stay with you? Cooper, what's the promise if people buy your gloves, right? What's the promise, David, if people buy your necklace? 
Simon, what's the promise if people buy your, your Cutco knives, right? You got to have a promise, folks. Otherwise, it's not that exciting. It is a solution to their problems. And it's the client's transformational journey. So you want to show people like, hey, before you book Airbnb with us, your life is horrible. But then after you ha hang with us and create an amazing family memory, it's going to last a lifetime. You got to show that transformation. Here's an actual screenshot of one of the things that is one of my courses. And we did a pre, we did an initial assessment and a post assessment. And so that's not a bad idea to, when you create a product or service, like for Addy, Addy's in the room and Addy has an equine coaching service. It would not be bad for her to have an initial intake for clients that say, how's the confidence with you riding your horse? And to go in different categories. And then a post interview that says, after working with Addy, now rate yourself. Now, when you can show that transformation, and by the way, folks, you should all be building customer validation. And in the beginning, everyone says this. They say, I don't have any testimonials. You have friends. And you have people that will actually demo your product in the beginning for free in exchange for a testimonial. So I don't believe for a second that people can't get testimonials. You just haven't asked. And there are people who have experienced your expertise. You might say, Carrie, I've never coached anyone officially. Okay? Have you coached a friend after their breakup? That's coaching. You know, so again, some of this is reframing your mind to realize like you actually have done what you are wanting to charge people. You've just never been paid for it, perhaps. All right, there's seven elements of a compelling offer. Number one is the big promise. Underneath the big promise, this is the solution that you present to your prospect. And it's the answer to their urgent problem. I can probably send this whole PowerPoint to all of you so you don't have to. Uh, in fact, I will. I'll send this whole PowerPoint to everyone on the email list. If you haven't signed up on the email list, um, I don't know the link. So Maria, if you can find the link to the, uh, the Q School, it's a Google Doc. People don't buy products and services, they buy solutions. That's really interesting. You, you could think about that for a long time. So Cooper, people are not buying gloves. What are they actually buying? They're buying warm hands. Ooh, that's good. The, the old statement was people go to a hardware store and when they ask to buy a drill, they're not buying a drill. What are they buying? Does anyone know this? It's kind of like a classic little funny analogy within sales. What are they buying? They're buying a hole. They're buying a hole. Is that crazy or what? When you go buy a drill, you are buying a hole. That's pretty interesting. All right, the big promise becomes the underlying theme for everything you say in your marketing. So you all came to Q School. I sold you and I marketed to you to come here for free. Cedarville was for it, but I had to make it really clear in my one sheet. A one sheet is the who, what, when, where, why, and how. Um, Emma, if you can write down a note for me to send everyone a free copy of the one sheet. Because the one sheet is an awesome tool that I created that basically has the who, what, when, where, why, how as a Google Doc. And I'll just explain it really quick. The second column says inspiration, not imitation. What I mean by that is that you want to look and see who else has done what you're doing. And you don't want to copy them. You don't want to imitate them. You want to be inspired by them. And then the third column says, my next best step. So that's the one sheet. Who, what, when, where, why, how. Imitation, not inspiration. It, inspiration, not imitation. And then my next best step. That is the one sheet I'm going to send you. It will be amazing for you to fill it out. You can fill it out for any product you create, any service you create. And then it's the story 
back to that story brand analogy that we teach in digital marketing of how your offer will take them from their current state to their future state. And then people make buying decisions based on emotion and justify it with logic. Has anyone ever bought on emotion? What do you think? Anybody ever buy an emotion? Anyone have a friend or family member buy something and you're like, what did you just buy? <laughs> like, what did you, why, what did you buy? I just bought a portable sauna. I know that sounds really weird. I bought a portable sauna because a few, a, about a year ago, way, way too much information for all of you, but who cares? I said to my wife, you know, we should get a, a cedar sauna. And she's like, no, we shouldn't. You know, like, where are we going to put that? So I, I was like, yeah, she's probably right. So then I saw a portable one that's really effective, supposedly, and cheap. And I'm like, hey, I could easily put this in the basement. Well, now it's actually on our screen porch because she wants it on the screen porch. But I was able to get it and use it, and it works. And so after my cycling, now I go in that portable steam sauna. Amazing. All right, way too much information. Touch as many of the prospect's emotions as possible. Again, I'm going through these fast. You, you can have the slide deck and dissect it, all right? You got to enter the conversation that's already going on in somebody's mind. I really spend time with my clients on this with their book titles. Because they'll pick these book titles and I'm like, whoa. Titles, by the way, really quick thing. And you can use this for your example. Titles, or a lot of you are creating courses, or you're creating products or experiences or ice cream stores, the title is meant to hook. The, the subtitle explains the benefits, right? So Nike is the title, and Just Do It is like the tagline or the subtitle, all right? So Jenny's, Jenny's is an ice cream store here in Columbus. Does anyone know their tagline? Jenny's. And they pick a really interesting word that we don't say a lot. Splendid ice cream. Okay? So I think that it's very important that you pick a title and then a subtitle. A subtitle that enters people's mind. All right. Know where they are in the buyer's journey. Are they, are they, and then watch this. Are they unaware? Are they problem aware? Are they solution aware? Are they, are they provider aware? This is important. Some people, so Kim, think about your new business. Some people aren't even aware. And you got to be like, whoa, hold on. I got to educate them that we even have a problem. But there's other people who say, I am so aware of my problem. What do we call this in my digital marketing class? We call it not being the seller, but being the, remember this? Not being the seller, but being the, the, the guide, the guide, yes. But you, what's that? The buyer, the buyer. So it's an amazing thing in your business. I know this sounds really weird and woo-woo, but hang with me. When you become the buyer, how can you be the seller, but you actually become the buyer? What's an example of that? Let's look at an example of that right now. Who's... who's Who's a company that sells their products and services, but they've reached such status that they're actually the buyer? What do you think? Nike. Okay, so are there people who are dying to be endorsed by Nike? Yes. Any, any product where it's really tough to get the tickets? What, what was that show a while back? Was it uh, Hamlet? Or no, what am I thinking? What, Hamilton, Hamilton. Thank, I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry. That shows you, man. I'm not watching that show. All right. So Hamilton, Hamilton had reached such status that they became the buyer. It's like, oh, can we get tickets? Right. Cybertrucks Tesla has reached a level where they are the buyer. 
There's a wait list. There's people who've been on the wait list for years. They've reached that level of status. Okay, next. Turn the promise into a story that the prospect can easily follow. I, I liken it like this. This is not my analogy, but this is, this is the truth. The person is on this side of the river and there's a river called the problem and this side is safety and your framework are the stepping stones for them to cross the river. Does that make sense? They're over here. They're separated by where they want to be, the transformation. And the problem is the big rushing, raging river. You're the guide. You're not the hero. You're not the person who says, I'll carry you over so I get all the credit and all the ego. You want them to actually solve their own problem. But they're going to step on the right stones. And the right stones are the fact that you've created the solution. Remember that? Back to the VPS week one, we talked about three personas. Remember that? What are the three personas? They all start with S. Remember this? You can cheat, you can look back. Does anyone know? You know, Addie? Yeah. Yes, look at that. Sage, Sherpa, and Struggler. So there are certain businesses that present themselves as the sage from the stage. The, sta the, the sage from the stage, that's tough to say. In other words, they're the guru. Tony Robbins. Tony Robbins, he's the guru. Come sit at his event. And then there are other businesses that present themselves as the Sherpa, or we call it the guide from the side. Is that pretty cool? The guide from the side. I'll walk alongside you. I will help you. And then there's other businesses that say, we're struggling too. Now you might be like, what in the world? How can a business make money by presenting themselves as a struggler, a fellow struggler? I don't know, you tell me. What's a business that presents themselves as a struggler? Is there any? Any, any books that are written this way? Any programs that are written this way? What do you think? Anybody? Yes. I compare it to the self help books. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. There's a lot of good attractional models that say, hey, I'm struggling too. I'm just willing to have the courage to talk, call it out and let's figure this thing out together. Yes. Exercise, fitness. Okay. Instagram, uh, exercise people. Yeah, totally. Awesome. All right. Uh, if needed, show the prospect their problem is urgent. So there's an old analogy that when does the dog get off the nail? The dog keeps howling and howling and howling and it's laying on a nail and it never gets up. That's the point. Like there's a lot of people that are in pain, but they're not in enough pain. And so sometimes you, your role is actually to show them their wound. I know that sounds like harsh at times, but that's what a doctor does. The doctor's like, actually, you're really, your body's, you know, really sick. You need to get healthy. All right, it's good to know the objections. And in the copy on your, on your, on your website, you actually write some of the objections. You anticipate some of the object, objections. You can do this with an FAQ page. So if you get objections all the time, one of my websites is easyip.today, easyip.today, and we have an FAQ section. And we hear so many objections that we actually create an FAQ page. So, Addy, your horse thing, it might be like, can you really coach someone virtually on horse riding? And that's an objection you know that they're already going to have. So why don't you address it ahead of time? Make sense? All right, address and deal with each of these in your marketing copy. So that was the big promise. Next is the framework. So this gets to our ice cream people. And the ice cream people, tell me your names. Christian. Christian? Okay, otherwise I'll just call you the ice cream people for the rest of your life. So the, the framework is that they can create 
a way to have ice cream. You're going to meet Eve at four, and we're going to talk about how to form your own LLC. And we did that on, on, um, over the summer on Zoom. I helped her do that. You're, there's things in your handouts. But she has a framework for her cookies, and she calls them mix-ins and this type of thing, okay? Framework is a solution broken down into simple steps. Give your prospect a buyer's journey. So folks, even Apple has a buyer's journey. And the buyer's journey often raises the price point as you go through the journey. Have you ever noticed this? So it's like, we'll get you hooked on AirPods. Then we'll move to the Apple Watch. Then we'll move to the iPhone. Then we'll move to the iPad. Then we'll move to the MacBook Air. And then MacBook. And then MacBook Pro. You know, this is how products and services create, get this, an integrated product suite. This is what I teach all my um, authors. Let's create an integrated product suite based upon your intellectual property. And you can then sample that intellectual property through workshop, courses, membership, keynote, all the different things. Hardcover, softcover, ebook, audiobook, 18 streams of income. Okay? Next, tell people what makes you different. There is nothing arrogant about saying, here's how we're different. In fact, I would argue that Jesus presented the gospel as different. You've heard it said, but I say to you. Does anyone remember where he often said this in what part of the scriptures? You've heard it said, but I say to you. You've heard it said, but I say to you. Like that's the whole Sermon on the Mount. He just keeps going back and saying, here's what you've been taught but I'm going, to, I'm going to teach you more. This is the new way. All right, the rare special ingredient that makes your process special and your solution possible. And by the way, this slide deck is a combination of a lot of different things. We used to have something called Business Academy Elite. It's taken from that, but it's also taken from a lot of other things. So this is not uh, one thing. All right. Next, convincing proof. This goes back to that whole thing. Every claim must be backed. This is where you have your testimonial. So, Addy, back to your illustration, you would have a client say, at first I was skeptical to, to um, have my daughter do horse riding sessions with Addy on Zoom, but I'll tell you what, she's done an amazing job and um, she's had success in her equestrian journey. So you have a testimonial with it. Use vivid, compelling pictures. Folks, I take pictures all the time. In fact, how many of you have my like, hey, can we take a picture? Have I ever done that? I do it all the time. Why do I take pictures all the time? Because I often use the pictures as part of the story. All right? So when people hire me, they get a built-in marketing machine. It's just true. It's, it's true. All right, next. Like I said, case studies. There's actually an app called Magnify. Magnify. It's called Magnify. It's an app. Check it out. This is how cool it is. Magnify, I think it's, um, I don't know, it's like, it's a subscription. But you send it to your clients. You, by the way, here's what I would do. I'd stack up all your testimonials and then do the free trial. Because I think the free trial is like seven days free. So you could literally stack it up. But here's the cool thing about Magnify. You send people the link, and it says, please record a testimonial, 60 seconds or less. Press the red button. They press the red button. It engages their video cam. It has a countdown timer. And then after they do their 60 seconds, it asks the person, do you like it? Watch it. If you like it, hit submit. And they all come to you. So you're not asking people to sit record something on their phone, and then wait, I can't send you the file, it's too big, and it got rejected because of spam. No, no, no. Magnify basically gives you a link and says, here's everybody. So you can create a contest. You could say, hey, 10 friends, can you try this product? All I ask is a testimonial. Here's the Magnify link, and by the way, 
I'm going to pick a $25 gift card for one of the people who submit. So again, you're building your testimonials. Ask for them, offer a product or service for free in exchange. All right, next. Value proposition, we've already talked about this. VPS, I am blank, who helps blank, doer understand blank, so that blank. That's the formula, I'll say it again. I am blank, I am blank, who helps blank, do or understand blank, so that blank. So I am an ice cream provider who provides little kids with incredible, cool, delicious ice cream so that they can have amazing summer days. Okay, so that's your value proposition statement. Make sense? Next. Folks, to create a wow experience, this is really simple. I get this from a guy named Michael Hyatt. All it is is expectations are here and your experience is here. That is a wow moment. In other words, I came in not thinking that I was going to get an amazing ice cream cone. I thought I was going to be average. But they had a horn that they blew. They lit a candle on my ice cream. They threw sprinkles in the air. And they let me throw a dart on the donkey. I don't know. I made that up. But that's that. I came in with my expectations here and my experience was here. So that's a wow moment. When you can create a wow moment, folks, there's, there's books on this. Uh, write, write the name of this down. It's a great book. It's super fun. It's called Talk Triggers. Talk Triggers. There's a hotel chain that has been made, has been made famous and beats out incredible budgets because they give you a warm chocolate chip cookie when you come to their hotel. Does anyone know what hotel that is? I don't know. Google it. Hotel chain, warm chocolate chip cookie. In the book called Talk Triggers, they literally tell you how this hotel chain beats out multi-million dollar hotels with budgets, all because they have a chocolate chip cookie that you get that's warm when you check in. Does anyone know it? Double tree. Double tree. So folks, I hear people all the time, but I don't have a big budget. I'm making this up, but if you have an Airbnb and you give them this wow experience that no other Airbnb or no other experience gives them, and it's a chocolate chip cookie that costs 99 cents, you might be that, that's called a talk trigger. Okay, so that whole book is based on that. All right, pricing and bonuses, pricing and bonuses, really quick. Oh my gosh, does anyone say, what should I charge? How do I know how much to charge? Does anybody ever say this? I'm going to give you the formula. Do you want to see the formula? Some of you are in my class. You know the formula. This is called the law of compensation. I wish I would have learned this at a very young age. It's amazing. Here we go. The law of compensation is based on three factors. Is there a need in the marketplace? If the answer is no, you're going to have a tough time. If nobody needs your product, you're going to have a tough time. Do people need comedy? Are there people who need comedy in their lives? Yes. Your ability. So how can I charge? How should I price myself? What's the need? What's your ability? And then here's the last factor. Irreplaceability. Irreplaceability. Folks, this is called the law of compensation. Let me give you a quick analogy. I, I explain it all the time to my classes. You have a furnace. It dies. The date is November 13th. It's 20 degrees in Ohio. Do you want your furnace fixed on November 13th? Yes. Do you have a need? Yes. Are there people in Columbus that have the ability? Yes. But is irreplaceability high on November 13th? No. You have a lot of choices, so the price goes down. But it's December 24th. Your furnace goes out. It's 10 p.m. It's 20 degrees. Do you have a need? Same need. Are there a lot of places in Columbus that have the ability? Yes. Irreplaceability just went through the roof because it's Christmas Eve at 10 p.m. So the price goes through the roof. This is why water at Disney or other places goes through the roof 
because they have irreplaceability. Make sense? This is why LeBron James can charge a lot of money. People have a need, people have ability, but irreplaceability. There's only one in the world. Make sense? So you can actually control your pricing based on these three factors. How do we create need or show people they have a need? How can we get better? And how can we become so irreplaceable? All right, next, what special offers can you do? So you can do offers, you can do bonuses. Bonuses must be related to your product. Do not give a bonus. Do not sell gloves and say, hey, if you buy our gloves, you also get nail polish remover. Like, that's not a good bonus. Is this true? I mean, it's kind of similar because it's about a hand, but it's not a direct bonus. So your bonus could be what? A sticker. A sticker? Cool. You've created, a, we're going to see in a moment about your email. You've created tips. What are the tips? Tips for winter running. So he could create a video short tutorial that when you buy the gloves, the first 10 people who buy get a short tutorial bonus mini course on top uh, cold weather tips. Make sense? Awesome. All right. Quality is more important than quantity. Don't be like, hey, buy my product, you get 39 bonuses. All right. I'd rather have two that are good. All right significantly increase the value. I've literally seen people buy products just based on the bonuses. This is called internet marketing. We won't get into it. We don't have enough time today. But a lot of internet marketers create such valuable bonuses that you're like, I'm going to buy just because of the bonuses. All right, next, urgency. If people think that your product's available forever, are they going to buy? Now, you got to create urgency. How do you create urgency? Incentive. Founder bonus pricing. Founder level pricing. Early opt-in. Like you create action. If people aren't sure why they should act, limited spots. Folks, you've been to the websites where you're looking at a hotel and it says 17 people looking at this property right now. And you're like, it's fake, but it still creates this anxiety in you and like, oh my gosh, we have to decide now. Is this true? Right? You're buying an Ohio State Buckeye ticket or whoever and you're like, oh wow, I got two minutes to buy or else that seat's going away. They know and it works. What will happen if they don't act now? Does Cedarville even do this with recruiting or scholarships? I know that you, they'll waive certain fees based upon early admission applications. They know this works. Limited time offer, discount, bonuses. It ends at a certain date. There's a certain size. Ooh, that's not urgency though. Let's see in the next one. Scarcity. Scarcity. It's different from urgency. Urgency based on time. Scarcity is based on quantity. Cooper, is this true? Do you have limited quantities? So play that up. I know people that say, we technically have a million units. Should we still say limited quantity? Let me ask you a question. If you have a million units of a product, do you still have a limited quantity? You do. So play that card. Play that card. But here's where you need to be really careful. Watch your integrity. Because I will tell you that back when internet marketing first started, yes, I'm that old, um, there would be people who'd be like, our shopping cart broke. We're extending the offer. So, there was a shopping cart that broke online. We're extending the offer. And guess what? It works one time. And the people then who said every time that they ran their campaign that their shopping cart broke, they lose the trust. And when you lose trust, People say, I don't want to buy from you anymore. Make sense? So don't play this card where you're like, well, we're just going to mess with people. All right. Scarcity. Do not fake scarcity. It destroys your credibility and reputation. And you can find creative ways to make it work.
So I've seen people say, hey, look, if you buy, you get an extra bonus session. If you buy, you get a discovery call. If you buy, you get an extra uh, guidebook that gives you extra things, this type of thing. Limited pricing, limited availability, these types of things. First 10 orders get a bonus. These are just examples, all right? So that was that. Uh, we have two guests in the room. We're gonna go quickly to each guest because we have 25 minutes for two guests. And uh, Cooper, you sent me your PowerPoint. I know you did. I have it somewhere. I'll find it. But while I find it, um, Come on up here, Eve. Is that, you got till 4.30? Okay, so Eve, come on up here. I'm gonna hand you the microphone. And uh, first of all, tell people mm -hmm. um, about your business. Okay, so I own a cookie company. It's a, a creative cookie, cookie company, so you can pick whatever mixins or flavorings you want to put in the batter. Mm -hmm. And then they're baked in this, on the spot within two to three minutes. So it's like you're creating your own cookie in a sense. I love it. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And uh, you said, why should I create an LLC this summer? Mm. I was really terrified of like making my business official. I'd been selling cookies, um, but I hadn't, I wasn't established with the state. Um, and actually like establishing my business as an LLC made me more official and it gave me more, way more confidence in my business. Um, it's a way simpler process than you'd think. It's a couple yeah. simple questions and you're ready to go. And people advised you to do an LLC, not me. Mm -hmm. People advised you because they said what? Mm. Remember about separating your, your assets from your personal and professional? Oh yes. So an LLC stands for a limited liability company, meaning that if I were to be sued, uh, let's say one of my cookies had something that was not good for someone in it um, and it hurt them, if they sued me, they wouldn't be suing me, they would be suing my company. So I wouldn't be sued for all I had, like if I had a house, all my money, it would be all that was encompassed in my company. Does that make sense, mm -hmm. everybody? So I think they should all seriously consider an LLC. Yes. What else can you do from a tax standpoint? So mm -hmm. like you're talking about computer, driving, your food truck, mm -hmm. like talk to us a little bit. Yeah, so let's just say I went on a trip to market myself to a different state or something like that. All of those uh, expenses was, would be deductible. Uh, so I would just put that on a tax form and I would get money back for those things. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Now there's different, there's different rules. Stay here, awesome, you're doing great. So I play this up. Like I, you know, I went to France last summer. Tax write-off, what? Come on now. How can I go to France with a tax write-off? That's crazy. I've done this a lot and so I'm being recorded so I'm not gonna say everything but, I'm, but, but here's the truth. Like I spoke in France. And I had a whole event in France, and guess what? There are laws about how much can you deduct. So I went on a cycling trip to the French Alps, but I also had an event for all my authors. So a lot of times when you see me traveling to really cool places, I also put in there some business. Does this make sense? But you can't do that unless you have an LLC. What did it do for your confidence when, they, when people found out that you, or even just you, when you said, I am a business owner? Well, it, I wasn't just a silly little test product anymore. There you go. I was actually trying to make my business work now. Like, I, I had to make a profit. Um, it made it so that I accepted opportunities more. Um, people knew about me more. Um, it was, yeah, it really helped me to put myself out there more. I love it, mm -hmm. I love it. You and I created the LLC, boom, <laughs> on Zoom, mm -hmm. in less than an hour. Yeah, I think it was actually over phone call because the Zoom link wasn't working. That's right, your, and internet, <laughs> your, your internet was sketchy. Yeah. <laughs> in your small town. That's how easy it is, just over a phone. Yeah. <laughs> 
So if you look here on the screen, I've mm -hmm. hyperlinked everything. This tutorial is amazing, folks. This is an eight minute tutorial. By the way, your tax dollars, I know some of you are from different states, your tax dollars pay the Secretary of State and they have a department, they have a department where they want you to form a business. Like your state actually wants you to get a business. They were happy when Eve, now it cost a little bit of money. Mm -hmm. What was it like a hundred? $99. $99 and yet for a hundred dollars, if someone were to eat a bad cookie, they could not go after your entire family and the house. Like folks, you gotta realize like that's the best hundred dollars you're gonna spend. Does this make sense? Okay, so there's the tutorial, there's the guidebook, there's the phone number, there's the e website, there's the email address. Does anyone, I know we can't go through it all today, but when you get into these questions, um, the statutu statutory agent, I made the mistake folks, listen to this, very important. There are websites that are like, hey, we'll be your statutory agent for a hundred dollars. I actually have a story on that. Yeah. I probably did the same mistake. So I bought right into it and I paid for it because I didn't read the fine print. It was a very stupid move. And well, I'm right there with you because here's what they did. They said, well, I don't know if you had this problem, uh -huh. but they said, we'll open two pieces of mail for you. But guess what? When you form an LLC, you get lots of mail. So now after those two pieces of mail, they're charging me $25 each to open my mail. And then they're taking, and then I'm like, oh my gosh, this is really important. I, then they don't show you what the mail is unless you pay the $25. Mm -hmm. And then they upload it so you can see it. So I, I fell into that little thing twice and I'm like, forget this. You're not my agent anymore. I'll be my agent. And now they just mail it to my house. Did you do the same thing? I did. I did. I, I should have told you. I forgot to tell you about that this summer. Okay. So don't do what we did. And that's what I'm saying, like, when you form an LLC, just be aware, mm -hmm. because there are people who watch websites and they're like, oh, we'll send them the domain listing where they pay $250 so we list their domain in our little magazine. Like, it's all scams and stuff, so don't worry about any of that. Just form an LLC. Always look, is it a government agency website? Okay? Even if you Google starting an LLC in Ohio, you'll probably see sponsored and ranked posts where someone will be like, oh, we'll open it for you for another 75 bucks. And then upsell you and upsell you and upsell. Go to the Secretary of State. They own this. Your tax dollars pay for it. And they want you to form one. Does this make sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, other than that, you can get a vendor's license. Did you get a vendor's license? Because she was mm -hmm. selling. Why should they get a vendor's license? Because um, it makes it legal. So you can buy, um, sell your products certain okay. places. It's only $25. Um, you do have to buy multiple. I think it's per county. Okay. I think. So if you're doing all these food trucks and you're mm -hmm. selling your cookies all over yes. the state, then you may need vendor's license. Mm -hmm. But I'm selling books, I'm selling them online, not in Ohio at events. Mm -hmm. And so therefore I didn't, you know, you don't need a vendor's license. Mm -hmm. Does this make sense? And then you can get an EIN number for free and that separates your social security from your LLC. Mm -hmm. So your social security number is not going and that's free right? Yeah, it's, it's a pretty easy process. There are some like tax questions that I was a little confused about, but you can easily just go online and figure those out. Awesome. You do need an EIN number to open a bank account though, a business bank account. So that's really important. Sweet. Mm -hmm. Look at that. Is that good? And how old are you? I'm 19. And, and you were, you were 18 when you first started? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I mean, 18 year old business owner, vendor, EIN number, super cool. Awesome, good job. Thank you. All right, so do you all see that then? So those links, this is an interactive guidebook where if you click it online, it'll go right to the website. All right, folks, we have 16, oh, by the way, Eve's Original Sin Cookies on Instagram, and you're still working on your website. Yeah. 
That's cool, that's cool. But see, what I like about Eve, though, is that she's taking imperfect action. This is something I teach people. Do not worry till it's perfect. Do not worry until it's all solid. Do not worry that your gloves is perfect or your ice cream. Like, start. Does this make sense? This is why you see Nike and other people have prototypes, because they can build other versions as they go. Willem, music, I know it's not a music box, I know it's a switcher, right? What, tell me, the official name? Median Prime. Median Prime, Medium Prime yes. So, folks, big suggestion. He applied at the pitch. You were at the pitch? You were at the pitch. Anyone else do the pitch so far? Okay, so both these guys took the pitch seriously. Write this date down, February 2nd. February 2nd is the next pitch. I'm not saying we can't have faculty apply. I don't know. I don't know. We'll have to look at the rules. But the pitch, how many of people are in the room that are going to help with the pitch? Yeah, Lillian, Will, Cooper, awesome. Maria, fantastic. So, folks, the pitch, very important, but it's a way that you can get your idea out. All right, Cooper, I found your PowerPoint. Come on up. This is how we're going to end the day with this incredible funnel. And Cooper did a great job. He put this all in uh, a slide deck for us. And we're going to actually share just some really cool things that, that you did. Yes, go for it. Yeah, so there's this whole rumor thing going on about Delaware. Yeah. Del a lot of people start their LLCs in, in, in Delaware. So Wyoming people started often because of uh, Web3 and crypto. Wyoming right now has very favorable laws for like blockchain and Web3 and crypto companies. They're just very, they're attracting a lot of big players. Delaware has certain... Um, a lot of people form their LLC in Delaware. And it deals with like um, exiting businesses and those types of things. But I think just as a general rule, if you're just starting a business, do it in your state. Yeah. Because you might have to like then have an agent in Delaware. I don't know. You see what I'm saying? Okay, so I downloaded this thing. We're coming to you, my friend. There we are. This is nice. It's very nice. Okay, so I'm going to hand you the microphone, and you're going to teach us. Um, oh, go to your note. Go to your notebooks, everybody. Um, I'm, I'm going to take a. Uh, I took a screenshot, and this this screenshot is uh, the picture that we took from my whiteboard. Remember that? Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll just show it to you really quick, everyone here. Hang with me. I'm coming. All right, so this is the Q School, and this is the picture. So you literally have turned this picture into how much hundreds do you think? Or are you over 100? Uh, in, in sales? Yeah, sales. It's like 800. $800, this picture. So we're going to show you what he did. He took action. And uh, I'm going to hand you the microphone. Walk us through your slide deck, all right? Yeah, so this slide deck is basically I just try to distill down what Dr. Oberbrunner and I talked about um, and from that picture and then just show some of the um, samples of the emails I sent. And you have, you have um, uh, Willem, can you bring up one of his gloves? I just, I've, never, I've never held one. <laughs> I want to hold one in my hand. And some people might want to buy it. And what's your website, by the way? Rungloves.com. Rungloves, G L U B Z dot com. You're a cross country person. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Your idea was at the pitch to do this. How much are these? How much do these cost? Uh, I'm selling them for forty dollars. Forty dollars. Those are size small. So. These are small. <laughs> I got big hands, and uh, oh, I like that. So you've really prototyped this thing well, and. Uh, Tell us really quickly why they're shaped like this. Just give us the quick value proposition and how this is different than Nike or anything else out there. Yeah, essentially, it fits around your running form and it makes your hands warmer. 
Um, and the fabric is, is yes, the natural running form is a lightly. Instead of like that, digits. Yeah. Digits have too much cold. Right. That's a, when you have that higher uh, surface area to volume ratio, you're going to get more heat loss. I work out in the morning with my friends, and it is so cold that I actually do this inside the glove. Yeah. And that's what you're saying. Cross-country people do this naturally inside the glove because, and then they have their fingers flopping all weird. Yeah. But you're saying you just saw that and took advantage. Yes. So good. Okay. So walk us through this slot. Walk us through what happened. We're going to go through this pretty quick, folks. So what did you do? You created a funnel. Yeah. Created, well, yeah we created a funnel. And that's kind of what we talked about. Um, and that's where you give the three emails, uh, which I kind of described as you give, you draw in, then you offer. Oh, you give, you draw in, and you offer. So those are your words for, for my funnel. So now you can probably sell this to people. <laughs> you can sell, okay. And then you thank them. Yes. Okay. So now take us through. The funnel, what did you do? So uh, essentially, this, this all kind of started off because I was doing surveys, trying to get people's advice about um, and, and their input about my product and, and what they thought about Cold weather running, and Ko was like, "Do you realize you have you know 500 emails? You could really do an email marketing campaign here." And he's like, "You already got people in the top of your funnel." Top of the funnel. This is called tofu. I know it's a weird thing, but it's called top of funnel. It really is. Tofu marketing is what it's called. So you basically originally cared about people's opinion, and I'm not saying this is disingenuous, folks. But you could create a survey. Addy, could you create a survey about... Uh, so, folks, one of the easiest ways to get people to opt into your email is to ask for their feedback. We do this all the time with book covers. Hey, do you like cover A or B? And they go through then a funnel, and now you've got their attention. And it's not spammy. It's not weird if you treat them with respect, and that's what you did. So what did you do? So, essentially, I, I made a survey uh, with Google Form, okay. and I... I Google Form free is free. Then you went in Strava, which is free. Stra what is Strava? Strava is a it's a it's a group where a bunch of runners get together. It's kind of like a social media for running and biking nerds, and there's groups in there like a forum where okay. you can discuss things. And, and ask did you questions. just post your link, or did you describe a little of your story around the link? Yeah, I, I basically, and I think this might be on the on the next slide potentially, um, or the next slide. Basically, that block there, um, I just described my story and just kind of try to distill down what I was all about. I love it. Innovative running glove research. So that was his headline. And then you told the story. My name is Cooper. I've been running since middle school. I'm the captain of my cross country team. I'm a grad student in entrepreneurship. My passion is this. Um, I want to create a product. I am creating a product, but I need feedback. You basically told them why you're asking for their opinion. Exactly, exactly. And then what was the results? And so I, I was really, my mind was blown. I, there are a lot of really supportive people out there. And I, um, at this point, I'm, I'm over 800 email or survey responses. I have 800 emails. That's ridiculous, folks. By the way, Facebook ads, Google ads, YouTube ads, all these things cost money. He's getting free subscribers. Eventually, this idea will be known out there and it won't work anymore, but it's still working right now. So keep doing it. But if, if you guys, I mean, pay attention to this. He is getting free email subscribers, not in a, um, not in a deceptive way, not in a, in fact, they're thanking you. They're telling yeah. you like, what? what? What are some of the helpful things they're saying? Well, I'm, you know, they're commenting, and they're, 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 a lot of people are going above and beyond, and, and, and they, want, they want to be part of this discussion. And they're inputting. You're creating a movement. Yeah, that's, that's the goal here. And right. one of the things I did ask, um, I said, would you be willing to receive updates? In the Google Form the survey. Form? And I've had, you know, 80-plus percent of people say yes. So 80% say at the end, by the way, that's very important. He doesn't just add them to the list. If you just added them to the list, you'd get negative energy. But at the end, you say, thanks for completing the survey. Would you like to what? What do you say exactly? I said, would you be willing to receive uh, feedback as we get closer to product launch? Nice. So then what happens? This is the first email that you give? Yes, yes. So essentially what we talked about is 
we talked about giving them something. We don't want to just immediately say, please buy this from me. I really want you to buy this from me. We say, let me give you something first and kind of, and, and, and kind of like you're saying, like make that movement and draw people in. You're starting a relationship. Subject lines are hugely important. Okay. So if Eve did one, hey, I'm about ready to launch a new flavor. Can I get your thoughts? And then at the end of the survey, it said, would you like to learn about uh, updates when we launch the new flavors? Then the subject line would be a give. What, do you remember your subject line off the top of your head? I think it was like something like, thank you so much for your support. Gotcha. So it's a thank you. And then, then you're giving them this nice picture of cold weather with four tips. Are you saying at the end, please buy my product? No. No. So do you see that? He gives with no strings attached. How long did you wait for the first email? I, I waited 48 hours until I sent the second email. Okay, so now the second email. Now here he is. This is why you should join the pitch. He shows the picture of the pitch at Cedarville. You see how cool this is? The pitch changed my life, by the way. Awesome. Really did. That's yeah. awesome. And what, what's that red button? So that red button is actually a link to a short one minute YouTube video. That's you out where the wind was blowing. Yeah. So it wasn't even good quality video. It's just a, a, people want authenticity. You don't need the stage, the lights. Will is amazing. Maria is amazing. Emma's amazing. There are three helpers here. This is amazing tech, but he's literally at Cedarville in the field with the wind blowing. And what do you tell him? I basically kind of give him a snippet of my story. I want to put a name to a face and basically introduce myself to them. Love it. All right. There you are with your product even. Yeah. So now, ooh, now it's kind of like, ooh, and you're giving a little peek of the product. Okay. How do you end this one? Do you um, say buy my product? At the no. End? Ah. I, I did not. So folks, when you don't offer, your, what's, the, what's the energy with this email? Fear of loss. I mean, you're seeing the product and you can't even buy if you wanted to buy. Interesting. Okay, now you finally come back. What's the subject line on this one, do you think, roughly? Is it like, buy my product? No, it was gift for you. Gift for you. So on the third email, give, give. Now, we, now what are you saying? So I, I gave him a promo code and just kind of introduced, you know, I, not pushing anything, but introducing my product and saying, you know, here's, here's a gift for you, here's 15% off. And you didn't even do it perfect, which is important, because we added it, we added, you came to my office and I'm like, oh wait, add limited time, right, yeah. right? So folks, this is what I'm saying, do not worry about perfection. I never do anything perfect in my marketing. You always learn, and then what was the result? And then I got nearly 20, 20 sales within a week. 20 sales within a week, that's huge. And From you spent zero. Spent zero. Just yeah. time. Okay, and what did you say here? Basically just, when you're making an email, just make it really easy to, to read, and it really just falls into the theme, clarity attracts, confusion repels. Canva? Yeah. Canva's a free, a free thing to help make, make graphics. Okay, and then what did you, oh, oh, now, check this out. He came to my office and I said, dude, you wanna take this to the next level? Create a Loom video for each person who bought. Have you started doing it? Yes, I've done it for all of them so far. Whoa, yeah. any, any response? I've got a couple, couple responses, but it's, it's more of like you're playing the long game. Playing the this. long game. So he literally is saying, Joe, thank you for buying. By the way, Taylor Swift used to do this stuff. I want you guys to realize like the big people that you think are like, oh my gosh, crushing it. They used to create little things like this and literally mail out their CDs and all those things in the beginning. So you made a personal video to Joe, and you're playing the long game. Yeah. So we said, rather than go wide, 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 go deep. Awesome. Yeah. Any questions for this, for this guy? Well, I would say the long game, what do you mean by that? What do you mean by yeah, what's yeah, the long game? Well, essentially what I mean is you want to establish customer loyalty, and you want to create a buzz where they'll talk about you, essentially. So you want to go above and beyond their expectations. We talked about what if some, because I'm telling you, this, this stuff happens. We talked about what if somebody's at lunch with their friend. Their friend's like, I got to use the restroom. They use the restroom. They open up their email and see an email from Cooper. They watch it. Don't you think when their friend comes back, they're going to be like, dude, I got to tell you the story. I just bought these gloves, and this guy created a video 
where he thanked me. Now all of a sudden that story makes sense. Doesn't cost. Word of mouth marketing. Good job. Thank you. So if anyone wants Eve's original sin cookies, I don't know if you have any on you, probably not. Or, but I'll tell you what, I've hired, I've hired Eve for uh, the pitch. Oh yeah, we hired Eve. Um, Cooper has product here as well. And uh, online, let's say hi to our people here. But folks, this was, uh, this was amazing. I love doing this stuff. And again, um, give some love to these people. Let's put their socials, Maria, so that people can follow. The first Q session were over 2,500 views. Can you believe that? Q session, Q school, session one. And then this thing goes on YouTube and lives. And so like this is really meant so that when a student comes to my office, I can save time and say, oh, you got to watch Cooper's Funnel on session three. You see? So everything you all are creating, you should be thinking of creating evergreen. The marketing term is evergreen content so that you don't have to go back and recreate it every single time. So now he has a campaign. This is called an email campaign, and he can just now someday even buy traffic. And this is where, think about this, folks. I'll, I'll close with this. If you had a vending machine where you went to the vending machine and inserted a dollar and out came two dollars, if that were true, would you ever stop putting money in the vending machine? That is the goal of online sales. Cooper has gone to the vending machine and put zero money in, just time, and out came $800. So eventually he's going to get to the point where Strava is going to be like, not going to work anymore. And then he has to realize, okay, we need to create paid traffic. And as long as his paid traffic is cheaper than the profit that he makes, it's the vending machine analogy. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? Okay. So folks, thanks for coming. Come in two weeks. We're going to get you all published authors, all right? Thanks for coming, everybody. Thanks, Cedarville. We'll see ya. Thank you. Yeah, you made it sound so easy. <laughs>